Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. And continues, don't you people know that the people of the city are not going to stand for this nonsense? There should be no tents anywhere in the public communities. And whenever we're dealing with human welfare and human rights, it gets complicated. Um, what occurred to me was, are there no empty hotels that are for sale in the city of St. Louis? So I understand a lot of people turned out for this thing. What, what kind of arguments were people making from the general public? Well, the general public really just doesn't want to see it. I'm Sarah Fudsky. Last week, an aldermanic committee gave unanimous approval to a bill that would bar people from pitching tents in public right-of-ways in St. Louis. The bill was spurred by concern about a homeless encampment near the River De Pere in Deep South City. That encampment is in the city's 12th Ward. But 12th Ward Alderman Bill Stevens has asked the city to hold up on the bill. And he joins us today to explain why. Alderman Bill Stevens, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So give us a little bit of context on this. Where is this homeless encampment that has stirred the concerns that, that led to this proposal from one of your colleagues? Yes. So this encampment on the River de Pere is located at Gravoy and River de Pere on the northwestern bank. So sort of catty corner from the abandoned steak and shake. And, and how big of an encampment are we talking? It has grown in the past few months. Uh, it originally was just a one to maybe a small handful of individuals, uh, and it has grown upwards to six to eight. And are there concerns from residents that this is, is maybe a, a troublesome bunch? Not so much troublesome, but there are public safety concerns uh, and, and public health concerns. You know, there's always the concern of waste management, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, there's the concern of perhaps a, an uptick in crime or perhaps the usage of illegal substances and so on and so forth. Okay. So people have some concerns about this. Mm -hmm. um, your colleague, Tom Oldenburg, he represents the ward that is just adjacent to your ward. He sponsored this bill. Walk us through, what, what would this do? So Board Bill 14 seeks to ban uh, tent encampments or any pseudo-housing materials on public right-of-ways, such as sidewalks and so on and so forth. But any utility uh, right-of-ways, the embankment of the River to Pair, any city-owned property, essentially. So Brad has a question on Facebook. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering this. Isn't it already technically illegal to camp anywhere other than a designated campground? Well, it's complicated. <laughs> I figured you might say that. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And whenever we're dealing with human welfare and human rights, it gets complicated mm -hmm. uh, and multifaceted. So at a moment's glance, uh, yes, we do have uh, specific areas for perhaps not in the city of St. Louis, but say in state parks or so on and so forth where camping is permitted. Mm -hmm. So it's not just permitted, but it is also permitted. Uh, and that one has to purchase access to it. Um, however, we also know that in circuit courts across the United States, courts have generally held, federal courts have generally held, that in the absence of adequate housing or beds or services, that there is a civil right aspect to using public space for shelter if necessary. So if a city can't provide shelter for somebody who's who's out there on the streets, they're saying you can't just round them up. You can't just make this illegal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, okay. more or less. So if I am affluent, I have lots of resources, and I decide to just pitch a tent in a city park, that's probably not going to fly. But if I'm homeless and I have nowhere else to go, the rules get a lot more complicated for the city. Absolutely. And, you know, there are always exceptions to the rule, Sarah, but I mean, nine times out of 10, if not nine and a half times out of 10, someone who's experiencing homelessness is experiencing a crisis, be it a mental health crisis, be it a socioeconomic crisis, be it an XYZ crisis. We come to homelessness from a million different paths. Mm -hmm. And there will always be those that take advantage of the opportunity or the, the situation. Um, but that, that's 
that's the exception, not the rule. Mm-hmm. People aren't saying, I want to live down by the River De Pere because this is the best place to live. That's oh, not what's happening. Absolutely. So there was discussion about this at this Aldermanic Committee. I know you are not on this committee that was discussing this, but you did go to this meeting. I did, yes. I, I attended the virtual meeting. Our committees are still virtual, so it is so easy as just hopping online. But I was in attendance, yes. So I understand a lot of people turned out for this thing. What what kind of arguments were people making from the general public? Well, the general public really just doesn't want to see it. Um, and and I can understand that. I can see that. You know, it forces us to confront the, uh, the failures of society, mm-hmm. right? We're in the United States in the year 2022. We should not have a homelessness problem, but we do. Homelessness mm-hmm. still persists. And every city across the United States is experiencing this and struggling with this question of how do we adequately address homelessness? Mm-hmm. So I, I think that it can put us in an uncomfortable position when we have to see it mm-hmm. and reflect upon ultimately the failures of our society. And that is really what's coming to the forefront uh, in these debates about Board Bill 14. You feel like people are saying, I don't want to have to look at this. You think that's what's driving a lot of opposition? I do. I do think that a lot of support for Board Bill 14 is is rooted in that. And then you do get a full spectrum of, you know, the one side saying, I don't want to see it, to, you know, they are still human, but we have to do something about this, to, you know, the opposite end of this is a human right. We have no right to infringe upon it. So we, we really are getting a full spectrum of opinions on homelessness with uh, Board Bill 14. A full spectrum of opinions. This seems to be what happens in St. Louis. Uh, people are very <laughs> invested in their city government. Uh, you know, that can be both a blessing and good. a curse. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, we heard from a number of our listeners who also had some thoughts on this. Uh, Gary writes on Twitter, I do not support the proposal to bar tents in public areas. In rare cases, folks pitch tents on public right-of-ways, streets or sidewalks that create a safety hazard to the camper or impede right-of-way to foot traffic. For those rare cases, assisting moves by a social support organization is warranted. Anne writes, quote, if they do not hurry and do something about this, it will for sure bite them in the, I'm going to just leave the rest unspoken because this is a family radio program. And continues, don't you people know that the people of the city are not going to stand for this nonsense? There should be no tents anywhere in the public communities. The city closed the homeless center that operated for years, so let them set up camp at City Hall. A couple different opinions there from different people. Gary suggested this idea of trying to assist these people. And I think that's something that you'll hear people bring up at meetings. <laughs> you know, that it's inhumane to just let people camp down by what is in some ways almost a, an open sewer. The River De Pere moves a, fa- a fair amount of things through the city. Um, have there been attempts to reach out with social service organizations to see if we could help transition people to housing? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So the Department of Human Services, Homeless Services Division, go ahead and say that five times fast. They go out daily with outreach uh, outreach providers to assess what led to this. Mm-hmm. What are the barriers that you have? And again, it's a full gamut of, you know, it can be mental health. It can be addiction issues, which the city of St. Louis considers to be a mental health crisis, not a moral crisis. Sure. Right. It can be fiscal. We do have one individual who is actively working, but is unable to uh, to put a down payment on, say, housing. We this have is a, one of these individuals in this camp. He's mm-hmm. he's out working his job and then going home yes, to his sleep boss, there. Yes, yeah. his boss has to pick him up every day and then drop him back off. Wow. Uh, a down payment, first month, last month, and the security, well, that can easily be $1,500. Yeah, especially know? these days. It's, it's hard to get an, oh, a, an apartment. Absolutely. But I, I have to say I agree with Anne. I agree that this is going to bite us in the you-know-what because it's a family program. And... I have to point out, I have a duty to point out that the Board of Aldermen has sought to address homelessness in a meaningful and adequate manner in the past. We did just this past session with Board Bill 2. But the main proponents for Board Bill 14 ardently, vehemently opposed it. In 12 wards out of our 28 ward city have banned any services or homelessness stabilization programs like the Jefferson Spaces or Tiny Homes or other attempts to address homelessness from their wards completely. So to Anne, I would say, look up your alderman or alderwoman, call them up and see what they're doing to address homelessness. Because half of your legislative branch of government is opposed to doing anything except banning it. Yeah. And so you say there are many aldermen who have tried to tackle this. People are trying to get good programs going out. But these are not, in your opinion, the people supporting this bill. And you know, it's the ones 
the, those of us who are opposing Board Bill 14, which has had no legal review yet, I have requested the city councilor and legal services of Eastern Missouri to review it. Because you have concerns that this is not going to hold up. The city could be sued. I do have concerns that it does place the city in a, uh, a sort of jeopardizing position uh, in light of legi- uh, rather a, a court of appeals case in the Ninth Circuit Court with Martin v. Boise. So we had Board Bill 2 and we had everyone oppose it. Mm-hmm. So it didn't pass you know, the um, the amendment to allocate funding to to homelessness services. We then end up with Bill, Bill for, Board Bill 14, which seeks to outright ban it, mm-hmm. right? Well, we can't do that because of Martin v. Boise out in the West Coast. And which, this, again, goes to this precedent that you, that you spoke of. If you're not providing housing for people who need it, you can't just boot them out of public places. Absolutely. So then we come back to the original question of why isn't the city doing anything about this? And we've just restarted the conversation. Yeah. We're just going in loops. Because, again, half of your legislative branch of government, St. Louis, does not want to adequately address homelessness. So you spoke against this at this meeting. I did. Um, give us the gist of your arguments. Were you speaking mainly on, we got to slow this down and see what the legal precedent says, if this can even uh, pastor, uh, pass muster with the courts? Absolutely. And there are greater concerns. The Board Bill, uh, Board Bill 14, as it currently stands, has no outline for enforcement. Okay, so we've banned tent encampments on on public property, okay, who enforces it? Is it the Department of Human Services? Is it the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department, public safety? Who's actually in charge of this this enforcement? Mm-hmm. And it doesn't answer that. It doesn't take into consideration uh, Martin v. Boise or more locally, Fernandez versus St. Louis County, which ruled that panhandling was a civil right, a protected civil right, not the panhandling aspect, but the usage of public space aspect. And I am not in a position where I can consent to putting the city in a precarious position. Where it could end up, uh, you know, this could end up backfiring for the city from from what they're attempting to do here. Absolutely. It gets challenged in court. If we lose that court case, we then lose the ability to to address it uh, whatsoever. Not whatsoever, because we can still address it, but... It becomes to, much more costly. Well, absolutely. And furthermore, we can then no longer restrict or... Uh, add restrictions to usage of public spaces. It preempts the field. I want to go to the phone line. Sandra is calling from Bridgeton with a question that maybe seems worth worth posing here. Uh, Sandra, hi, you're on St. Louis on the Air. Thank you. Um, what occurred to me was, are there no empty hotels that are for sale in the city of St. Louis that could be converted? The people could then have a private bedroom and bathroom small space to put their stuff. You could put a community kitchen on the first floor, use the meeting rooms for job training, substance uh, abuse counseling, mental health counseling, whatever else would be needed. Why not buy a hotel? Uh, Sandra, thank you for that thought. I I know that's something that that people are are wondering. Um, Alderman Stevens, is that something the city has discussed? That is an excellent question. And Sandra, if I ever meet you out in Bridgeton, I'm going to shake your hand. Uh, That is exactly what the city of uh, of Memphis has done down in Tennessee. Uh, And there's also a program in St. Paul, Minnesota, where it wasn't a hotel, but rather a former convent. Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely a, a successful stabilization program that does have that community aspect and quite frankly mimics our own Jefferson spaces or tiny homes, we use the term interchangeably, mm-hmm. which itself has been wildly successful. The issue there is capacity. Mm-hmm. We've got a wait list for the Jefferson spaces, 50 people deep. So I'm absolutely with Miss Sandra. I think the city should take over uh, Jefferson Arms downtown and convert it to not just a homelessness shelter, but a general drop-in for city services. Well, Sandra, thank you for that idea. There's there's some support here from the aldermen. Um, but as Alderman Stevens mentioned, uh, the board has not been willing to go forward with some of these proposals to try to do something about this issue. It could be a hard sell here. Going forward, this made it out of the committee with seven to nothing support. Again, you are not on this committee. You tried to speak in favor of doing something else here. Do you think this could get passage from the full board of aldermen? Well, the legislative process is a metered process. It can go forward. It can go back. It can stop in the water where it is. So I can't speak to the the progression of the bill, but I can say that we are expecting the city councilor's opinion as well as the opinion of the legal services of Eastern Missouri by uh, the end of this week on the 13th. And I, I think barring that, none of us should be pledging our support to it before we have 
uh, an impartial legal opinion on whether or not it would pass muster. Yeah, that seems really important. Well, so that's coming, hopefully, by the end of this week. Mm -hmm. I hope you'll keep us updated as this story continues. Absolutely, I will. All right. Well, uh, 12th Ward Alderman Bill Stevens, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course. Thank you for having me. Today's episode was produced by Emily Woodbury with audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.